good good morning one and all welcome to the today session on the friction clutches today we will discuss about uniform pressure theory and uniform wear theory myself professor kushare working in mechanical engineering department kk work in stop engineering education and research learning objective of the today session uh, after this session you will be able to compare uniform pressure theory uniform wear theory and you will find which theory is best suitable while designing the friction clutches now let us start you will observe here in the figure where clutch is used and already we have discussed this topic what do you mean by clutch different classifications then single plate clutch multi plate clutch then their tra transmission capacity is based on different theories but in today's uh, session we are going to discuss about the uniform wear theory and uniform pressure theory you will observe here this is the topic of the vehicle you will find the clutch which is used in between engine and the gearbox generally because the engine you will get the high speed and in between the gearbox and the engine clutch is used why it is used that is also the question location of the clutch you know very well clutch is required to transmit a given a power and power transmitted by the clutch is the product of torque and the speed if the if uh, engine runs at the greater speed lower is the torque to be transmitted therefore it's logical to place the clutch at the high speed side that means to connect engine and the gearbox otherwise uh, if you are going to put a gearbox in in between clutch and the engine the it may going to increase the cost also and uh, we'll have to transmit the high torque at uh, high torque and it is also going to increase the cost that's why clutch location is also important and generally you will find it is in between engine and the gearbox remember these things again here there are two theories one is the uniform pressure theory and second one is the uniform wear theory these two theories are used to find out or to determine the torque transmitting capacity of the friction clutches now here now let us discuss the first one uniform pressure theory you know very well when clutch is new that time generally uniform pressure theory is used why clutch is newly designed and why that time we have to use the uniform pressure theory the because in new clutches you know very well the number of springs are employed and because of these springs all these springs are new having proper stiffness and because of that pressure which acts on the friction plates remain constant over the entire surface area of the piston disc therefore in uniform pressure theory pressure is assumed to be constant if you are going to observe this figure one look at this cursor you will find the pressure is constant on this the entire surface area of the friction disc here remember this thing the according to uniform pressure theory pressure remain constant over the entire surface why because in new clutches springs are employed and because of that uniform pressure over the entire surface area of the friction disc that's why according to this theory it is assumed that is pressure is assumed to be constant and based on that we can derive the expression already we have derived in earlier session to uh, find out the torque transmitting capacity based on this uniform pressure theory what you have to remember uniform pressure theory is applicable to new clutches why new when clutch is new the springs are also new and that's why it put the pressure is constant over the entire surface area of the piston disc this is the assumption then another theory generally used and applicable to the friction clutches which is uniform wear theory in uniform wear theory what is the assumption wear is uniformly distributed over the entire surface of the piston disc but actually what would happen after certain period of time when clutch is used so you will find the clutch gets worn out wear of the clutch is going to occur that's why it is used for the worn out clutches this theory then again axial wear of the friction disc is also proportional to the frictional work the work done by the friction force at the radius r is proportional to the frictional force that is mu phi 
and the rubbing velocity 2 pi r into n where n is the speed that means we are totally depends on this frictional force and this rubbing velocity and if we are going to consider here you will find the speed and the coefficient of friction are the constants therefore again if you are going to do here the wear is also directly proportional to pr or in other way you can say when wear is uniform that is pr is equal to constant and in this case <coughs> P is inversely proportional to R and pressure is maximum at the inner radius and minimum at the outer periphery. Look at this. The pressure is, look at this diagram, you will find pressure is maximum at the inner side and it's less or minimum at the outer side. This, you know, the pressure distribution applicable to uniform wear theory. The uniform wear theory generally preferred. Why? Because after some period of time, it's okay, clutch is new one, but after some period of time, it gets worn out. That's why it is applicable to worn out clutches. And yeah, it is also going to reduce the torque transmitting capacity and it gives the proper result during its running condition. Again, here, the how the wear mechanism is happening in friction linings. So there are two phases, how it is going to happen. When friction lining is new, the uniform pressure theory is applicable because during that time you will observe pressure is constant and when you know very well in wear according to uniform wear theory wear is directly proportional to PR or directly proportional to R. That means when we are at the outer race will be more because of rigid places, rigid pressure plate. And this will release the pressure at the outer edge and because of that wear is directly proportional to this R. This is one mechanism of the friction lining and in phase 2 what is going to happen? When pressure is released, what would happen? There will be no further wear at the outer edge. Then where this wear is going to occur and when pressure is released you will find wear will now take place at the inner edge due to the contact of the pressure plate. And this will release pressure and stop further wear at the inner edge. In this way, this wear mechanism is occurring in friction lining. Try to remember this thing in page 1 and page 2. Then here, we, therefore, if you are going to discuss these, the phases of the wear mechanism, you will observe. Wear occurs alternatively at the outer and inner radius. Then it will continue till the pressure is adjusted in a such a way that product PR becomes the constant. Otherwise, you will find the wear occurs at the inner radius and outer radius. And it tries to adjust this product PR becomes constant. And therefore, it results in uniform wear at any radius. The generally, which theory that you have to use while designing the clutches, the always prepare a uniform wear theory. Remember this thing. Because here some of the observation based on this uniform pressure theory and uniform wear theory. So you know very well uniform pressure theory is applicable only when the friction lining is new. When the clutch is new, friction lining is new. During that time, pressure is uniform. That's why this theory is applicable. But when lining is put into service, you know very well wears where is going to occur that means the major portion of the life of friction lining comes under the uniform wear criteria and therefore it becomes more logical to use uniform wear theory in design of clutches now what you understood from this discussion the uniform pressure theory is also there but it's applicable when friction lining is new but in design, if anyone is asked you to design a friction clutch, to always prepare a uniform wear theory. Why? Because when friction lining is put into service, wear is going to occur. And major part of life of the friction lining comes under the uniform wear criteria. And therefore, it's logical to use uniform wear theory in design of clutches. Again, second important thing. The friction radius of new clutches is more. Because of that, what is going to happen if friction radius is more, that means R is more. We have already discussed this relation. The torque transmitting capacity is also more. The one other hand, torque transmitting capacity of worn out clutch is low. Why it's low? Because this radius is low in this worn out. 
due to lower friction radius. Yeah, it is mentioned here. But when we use the uniform wear theory, we are on the safe side and we assume lower torque carrying capacity for the given dimension. And such a clutch will have a little more torque carrying capacity when it's new. That means even though we have designed for uniform wear, you will get the lower torque carrying capacity compared with the uniform pressure, but it gives the correct result and you are, uh, you know, the design is at safer side. Remember these things, it's very important one. So based on this, uh, if you are going to discuss a uniform wear and uniform pressure theory, so we can make some concluding remark. The uniform pressure theory is applicable to when only friction lining is new. Uniform wear theory is applicable when friction lining is get worn out. Then second, friction radius of new clutches is slightly greater than the worn out clutches. That means torque transmitting capacity of these clutches are more than the worn out clutch. But if you are going to use the equation of torque transmitting capacity according to uniform pressure theory and uniform wear theory, you will find there is no lot of difference in torque transmission. Then torque transmitting capacity of new clutch is slightly more than the worn clutch, slightly more, remember these things. That's why no need to bother about the uniform wear theory, we can use it. Therefore, what you have to do, always while designing the friction clutches, always prefer a uniform wear theory in design of clutch. Then, it's okay, slightly torque transmitting capacity of uniform pressure theory is more than the uniform wear theory. Then, how to increase the torque transmitting capacity if we are going to use a uniform wear theory? Look at this, this is the relation which is applicable according to uniform wear theory. You know very well, mu p by 4d plus plus d. And if I am going to use this d by 2 plus d by 2 and by 2, that is the rm min radius, that is mu p rm. The torque transmitting capacity according to this theory that is uh, mt is equal to mu into p into rm that means mt is the torque transmitting capacity depends on mu depends on p and depends on rm that means uh, in case of also uniform wear theory to increase the torque transmitting capacity what we have to do we can increase the mu we can increase the pressure plate uh, pressure then we can increase this RM main radius of the friction disk. That means by increasing this parameter, we can increase the torque transmitting capacity. But how much is the limiting value of mu up to which we can increase the coefficient of friction? That means we can use the friction material having a higher coefficient of friction. And if you are going to discuss that thing, you will find the coefficient of friction for automotive clutches, which uses the asbestos friction lining in contact with the cast iron surface is taken in the range of 0.3 to 0.4. That means it should not be greater than that 0.3 to 0.4. Then again increase the pressure, you know, the plate pressure. It's okay. But allowable pressure on friction lining varies from 0.1 Newton per mm square for a large heavy duty double plate clutches to 0.25 Newton per mm square. That means Allowable pressure for the clutches with metal plates is in the range of 0.7 to 1.05 Newton per mm square. They are having the limiting value, but by increasing this coefficient of friction or use of friction material having high coefficient of friction, increase of the pressure uh, plate pressure and increase the min radius, but size is also going to increase. We can not, not going to increase the min radius of the friction disk also. Within the limit, we have to vary these parameters to increase the torque transmitting capacity by these three methods. Okay, I hope you got it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have referred Vivendari's book, Design of Machine Element, third edition, Mega Oil publication for this uh, session. Okay, thank you, thank you. If you have any query, please contact me through the WhatsApp number 9890-426679 or mail me at pbkushare at the redkkr.edu.in. Thank you, thank you very much.